you can see police cars pulling away behind me. They're wrapping up the caution tape. We still have those heavy rains. We still have those heavy winds. You, oh, you see that flash of lightning right there. I'm going to step out just one more time for you to get a look. Officers are still here speaking to residents. I just want to show you this sign behind me. It says the good news is the world has reopened. However, we are still trying to get fully staffed up. You can see this wind pushing in all this rain um, up from off the shore. It's covered, I would say, about half of the pavilion. I have the complaint right here. I've read through it, and it alleges that the changes to Georgia's election laws have made it more difficult for black and minority voters to participate in the political process. He said the show is back. He said his goal for tonight's season opener was to have the biggest, most ambitious season opener yet. Chatham County police say they dispatched an officer to the area of Highway 204 and I-95 on reports of a suspicious vehicle. Police say things escalated once the officer came in contact with the suspect. After responding to reports of a suspicious vehicle, Chatham County police say the officer on scene determined the car's driver was wanted on warrants out of Virginia. Otter woman Linda Wilder Bryan spoke to police and says the suspect and officer got into some sort of altercation at the scene. The officer was knocked down. Um, the assailant stole the county car and he drove it from, uh, from 204 on the highway, off the highway, through some arterial streets. Some cars were damaged. Alderman Curtis Perti says Chatham County Police and Georgia State Patrol chased the suspect to the intersection of Victory Drive and B Road. The police went on a chase to, to apprehend the suspect. Uh, during the chase, the suspect fired rounds out of the vehicle, also struck other vehicles uh, as police were chasing the vehicle. The suspect ended up crashing into the Daffin Park sign. From my understanding, at least from what I was told, uh, the, the trooper, and I don't know which trooper it was, but the trooper uh, shot the suspect as the suspect was getting out of the vehicle. So, so mm -hmm. the suspect was armed. Wilder Bryan says the suspect was taken to Memorial Health Hospital in Savannah. The assailant is in the hospital now, and I don't know the extent of his um, gunshot wounds. They haven't told us that. Now, Alderman Perti held a community conversation to address violent crime in Savannah. We'll hear more from him coming up in the second half hour about tonight's incident and also gun violence in the area. Well, thank you. Yeah, I love your you. Service. You're welcome. I thank you for your service. Despite troubles of his own, Terrence Davis has a pretty inspiring outlook on life. You're not homeless if you wake up every day. He says he was walking through town to grab some food this morning when he saw people standing in line and decided to join them. Please, thank you. You're welcome. Now he's walking away with more than just a warm meal. Now I also have some masks, toilet paper, I have things, uh, food is at the end of the line, clothing, Maybe I'll be able to get a backpack out the deal. And it's all thanks to Union Mission and their volunteers. This kind of event reminds everybody that they're important, that they're loved and cared for. Pat Youngquist is the nonprofit's executive director. She says today they handed out toys and clothes to those in need and hot meals to go for 300 people. People need to know that someone cares, that people think about them at Christmas. Youngquist says sometimes people struggling feel invisible. But for at least today, many of them feel loved. It means the world to me because you have people out here that actually want to help. They're really good people. Like they're, they go above and beyond. Reporting in Savannah. Allie Jenner John, Fox 28 News at 10. Officials with the Savannah Police Department say they brought William Zachary Harvey here to question him about an aggravated assault investigation. They say he was left alone in the interrogation room where they later found him with self-inflicted injuries that led to his death. Now his family is begging for answers. He was my lifeline to this world. I don't know if I'll be able to make it. And that's why I'm here because I want to know what happened to my child. I want to know. I need to know. A mother in disbelief. She says her son died while in police custody last Saturday. William was my only son. He was the next thing to me to God. Now she and family members are seeking answers. They say they don't believe he would have harmed himself. That is not my brother. My brother loved life. He loved life. He enjoyed life. And their lawyer, Maui Davis, says he's working to bring the family justice. We're deeply concerned that someone can be brought here for an interrogation and somehow is left alone long enough to allegedly 
take his own life. Members of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation are conducting an investigation and officials with the Savannah Police Department say the personnel involved have been placed on administrative leave. What's really critically important is that anyone that comes into the custody of law enforcement, they have a duty, a duty to safeguard that individual and to ensure that they are safe and they remain uh, healthy while they're in their custody. Davis says the department should have footage of the room during the time of the incident, and he's asking for that to be released. As long as I'm living, it's my job. <laughs> reached out to SPD for comment, but because of the ongoing investigation, they say they cannot give one. But also here today to support the family were several older women. We'll tell you their promise to the family coming up in the second half hour. According to the Internal Affairs Investigation, Officer Redeem Green says he tried to save the life of William Harvey on April 3rd after Harvey was found hanging in a police interrogation room. The investigation indicates that just four days later, Officer David Curtis sent a meme to a group chat called East Side Night Shift. The meme shows a figure jumping off a chair and hanging themselves. Curtis sent the meme with the text, is it too early to send this to Green? Co-supervisor Corporal Erica Tremblay replied to his message saying, too soon, Curtis. Interviews provided to Fox 28 have Curtis saying he was, quote, laughing at a dark situation. Curtis says he did not end up sending Green the meme. Co-supervisor Sergeant Christopher Hewitt also admits to being part of the group chat. He says in an interview that he did not reply to the meme because he, quote, kind of forgot about it. Hewitt says he should have addressed the incident with Curtis. The investigation shows Officer Green explaining that Officer Chris Johnson told him about the meme. Green says he felt like the post was blaming him for Harvey's death. In separate interviews, Green and Curtis also admit to having past issues with each other. The Internal Affairs Unit was made aware of the meme on April 26th. Following this investigation, Sergeant Christopher Hewitt, Corporal Erica Tremblay, and Officer David Curtis were all fired. Officer Green was fired as well, but police say it's because of a previous investigation not connected to this one.